Hey, Chip, what's going on today? Hey, what's going on, Mike? Uh, I'm getting ready to machine a customer job. It's, a, uh, it's on a front plate, 13B. We're going to machine the cavity of the oil pump and remove the, uh, the casting imperfection and make this uh, cavity flow much better, have a smooth surface and smooth finish. So that way, the oil, as the oil gets picked up and transferred to the pump, it has a nice interrupted flow out to the, uh, to the engine. So I'm pretty much setting up the machine. I'm going to set up my tooling, measure the tooling out, and then uh, start buzzing. So now I'm going to go to my heat shrink, grab an end mill, and heat shrink it. I'll show you guys how a heat, shrinking, uh, heat shrinker works on a uh, end mill. So we use a six mil, the six mil end mill to rough it out, the two fluid ball end. And uh, I use a MST shrink fit holders. These are sectional. So you can buy these separate. You don't have to buy the whole tool to buy one size holder. You can buy just the, uh, the half sections and have just one holder for multiple sections. It allows me a lot of clearance around my tool and my holder. As you can see, the diameter is very close to the, uh, to the tool that I'm going to use. It's not a big head like a uh, collet holder. So here's a collet holder versus this tool being in here. As you can see, I'm limited to clearance, the size of the, uh, the holder itself, where the heat shrink that is the clearance I need to worry about. So it's a couple of millimeters over my tool. So we're going to put it in the, uh, in the heating tool. So I'm going to start it up. I'm going to let it heat. It takes about a minute to heat that up. I'm going to grab a stopper, and I'm going to uh, set the height of my tool. So pretty much this is the stopper I'm going to use. It's going to allow the end mill to only slide up to once it hits the, uh, the stopper. This is, it slides on and off, and I can adjust the, uh, the length of it. So around 20 mils into the tool, and it will give me about 40 mils of playroom. Grab my uh, tweezers. Let's check it out. There she goes. And now we're going to cool it down. Chip has 3D scanned the part we are working on, as you can see here. He now uses his design software to interpret the newly designed areas as sections to be cut away by the CNC machine. The new design is now applied to the CNC software 3D part. Now that it has been added to the part, it can be placed inside the CNC machine and will know where to cut off material. Before any CNC work is done, it is important for the tool being used to be measured by the machine. This gives the machine information on where the tool is located on the X, Y, and Z axes. Chip has CNC'd a custom mounting plate for this part. Many CNC shops crudely clamp the part down to the machine after measuring. By creating his own mounting plate, this allows him to easily mount the part for perfect alignment. Now using pre-existing holes on the OEM part, Chip is able to secure the part in place so it is perfectly in sync with the measurements of the CNC program. Chip now moves the part into position using a dial. The dial can move an individual axis forward or backward for X and Y, or up and down for Z. Chip now starts the program he has imported to the machine, and it starts the machining process. A special coolant is used in order to keep the tool at workable temperatures. This is important because without it, the tool will wear far quicker and the part or the tool may also chip or warp 
due to the heat produced. So we finally machined the uh, front housing oil pump cavity so it's fully CNC'd inside uh, and also the return cavities when it comes through the gear bearing and it falls down it's also smoothed out so it has a much faster return to the oil pump and as you can see it's uh, extended and enlarged probably like 15% and smoothed out. So all the, uh, the casting imperfections have been uh, removed and smoothed out. Also added a O-ring groove. So the uh, oil pump is fully sealed around the, uh, the flange. Now on this one here, we also added the direct port outfitting. I make these in house. They're a dash 10 with uh, three O-rings to seal the inside. So it's bored out and uh, three additional O-rings to, to seat and make it uh, leak, leak proof. Also, in addition to having this port done, the galley has been reamed out to 12.9 millimeters to match the diameter of the Dash 10 port. So now we have a true dash 10 out from the pump directly rather than having an undersized port into a 90, going to a 90, into the front cover, going to another 90 and out to the oil coolers. I don't remember what the mathematical equation is for every 90, it adds an additional two to three feet of straight line. I don't have that information in front of me, but. If somebody wishes to uh, get technical, I can get it. So this way, you probably eliminate close to 10 feet of straight line. And then what else? On this plate also, we added a uh, dash six O-ring port directly to feed the main, the main gear on the front housing. This has been plugged up and an additional brass plug has been installed inside so the oil does not flow up top to the dowel pin area. That way if the engine has some type of failure and the front iron cracks from uh, drag racing use, oil does not get all over the track or all over the engine bay. It just cracks and that's it. So this option can be done in a couple of different ways. You can plug up the front port to bypass the front cover as it goes through this port there is a pressure regulator here in the front and it comes out the front this is plugged up so we have a direct out this and this version the oil pressure is much higher than having it go for the front and having the this is a relief over pressure relief uh, pressure regulator on the front so it uh, bypasses the, uh, the overpressurized uh, oil before it gets to the engine. In some instances, this might be too much oil pressure for some applications. So in that case, this remains open, this port, so you can still utilize the front pressure regulator, but you have to plug up the, uh, the out port on the front plate. So this is plugged. Oil still comes through here and it bypasses down back into the oil pan and still retaining the front direct out. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.